Okay, so in this video, we're going to be taking a look at how to unblock or change a plate heat exchanger in a boiler. Now, you'll probably know when you need to do this because your hot water will be going hot, cold, hot, cold, and it, it just makes it horrible to take a shower. So what's happening is because the plate inside is blocked, the boiler will overheat and then it will turn off, cool down, and it'll keep going through that cycle. So in terms of how we change the plate heat exchanger, on this specific boiler, we've got two screws that we need to undo. So now that those two screws are undone and the case is off, you can see our plate is right there at the back, it's the little silver thing. But before we touch the plate, first thing we're gonna do is isolate the cold mains going in, and then we're gonna drain down the boiler as well. Now, if the boiler is not the highest point of the circuit, then I would advise isolating the flow and return. If the boiler is the highest point of the circuit, like it is for me because this is a flat, then you don't really need to do it. So now that that's done, we're going to pop off this little condensed hose and catch any water that pops out. And then we'll be able to remove the condensed trap by giving it a little bit of a wiggle. Then we're going to get a pump, connect it to the Schrader valve and charge it up. But strangely enough, this one's already over a bar, which is strange. Um, so we're not going to bother touching that. But what we are going to do is undo the two screws for the plate heat exchanger. Now you've got one on the left and one on the right. Now, even though you've undone the boiler and opened the hot taps, I would still recommend having a towel or a bucket underneath the plate, just because when you take it off, there's always a little bit of water inside. So just have that ready to catch any excess water. So once you've undone those two screws, the plate should be ready to come out. The plate might even fall back or it might just stay in place because it's just a little bit stuck where it's been in situ for so long. But you'll find that you might struggle to get the plate out. So what you need to do is quickly remove this motor by just sliding it up. And now that's out of the way, the plate should just come out. Might take a little bit of wiggling or maneuvering, but it will come out as you can see. And there it is, the plate is out. It took a little bit longer because I was using one hand instead of two, but got it out and you can see this side, not too bad, but here you can see there's quite a lot of debris in here and that's going to restrict the flow so what we're going to do is take this first drain get some spirit of salts in there clean it out or if you wanted to put a brand new plate in then you would skip the spirit of salt step and you just put a brand new plate in so got the plate over a drain and now about to pour the spirit of salts in and you can see it's, it's quite blocked so it's coming up to the surface level on the left, but it's not spreading to the right because of all the debris. So I'm gonna pour some in on the right as well and try and get it all cleared up. Now, if you speak to different engineers, I feel like a lot of people unblock these differently. Some people will wait until it starts bubbling. Some people will do five minutes, pour it out, do five minutes again. Some people will just wait half an hour. Me personally, I'll pour it in for about 15 minutes, clear it out of water, put a little bit more in to make sure it's not bubbling, wait another five minutes, and then once that's all done, I'll rinse it all out, make sure there's no more acid inside, and then I'll put it back in the boiler. So here to me, it still doesn't really look like it's flowing that well. It's taking a while to come through the other side. So what I'm gonna do is give it another five minutes, put some more spirit of salts in, and then give it another try and hopefully it should be all good. So I poured spirit salts in again. It's probably been about five minutes, but a good sign is it's not bubbling at all anymore. So what I'm gonna do now is just run some water through it to clear out all the debris that's inside and also make sure it's flowing good. So we'll do that and then we should be able to get the plate back in the boiler. So yes, the tap is on a little bit more powerful than before, but you can see in terms of it flowing, it's flowing a lot better on the right now. It's clearing out a lot of the rubbish that's inside. So I was gonna rinse it through a few more times and then put it back in the boiler. Basically like new, it even needs to buy a new plate. But just a quick reason why you might need to change the plate just in case um, any of you have questions. So sometimes if it's completely blocked up, you can buy a new plate. 
but I say the main reason why you need to buy a new plate is if it pinholes. So sometimes these plates can pinhole. So the central heating and the cold water will be mixing. And you'll know this because the pressure will always be going up in the boiler even though the filling loop shut. So that's a few reasons why you might need to change it. If you talk to technical, I think they always recommend that you change the plate, but you don't always need to. As you can see, Spirit Salts can do a good job. So that's all done, it's all dry. Just gonna put it back in the same way I took it out. So just a little bit off topic, I feel like if there was an award for recording with one hand and fixing the boil with the other hand, I feel like I should definitely be nominated for that because the struggle I go through sometimes trying to record with one hand and repair with the other hand is just unreal sometimes. Um, but anyway, plate's pretty much in position now. I do just need to use my other hand to screw it in while I use my right hand to hold it. But that should be the plate pretty much all done. From here is just reassembling the boiler. Okay, so that's the condensed trap all sorted. Next, just need to sort out that little motor, pop it back in. So now I'm gonna shut the drain off, unisolate the cold, and like I said, if the boiler wasn't the highest point for you, you'd also need to unisolate the flow and return. But for me, I didn't need to do that. So just shut the drain off, unisolate the cold, and we can see if there's any leaks. So no leaks on the cold water or hot water circuit if you want to call it that. Now we need to do the filling loop and for some reason they've got an isolation valve as the filling loop. It's a bit of a rare thing to come across. But yeah, gonna fill it up to 1.5, make sure it's all good. But that's it, water's staying hot, it's not overheating, boilers are looking all good. Just gonna do my safety checks and then this will be this job done. But that's it. Hope you enjoyed. If there's any questions, let me know in the comments below. If you're an engineer and there's something you would have done different, again, let me know. Always looking for new tricks and hacks to make my life easier. So, yeah, hope you enjoyed. See you in the next one.